3D printing has become more than just making miniatures, flexies, and other toys, and even though that's fun, it's gone into more functional parts, and that has become more consumer available. Today, we're printing 3D printed hand tools, and we're gonna see if they hold up. <laughs> I'm Brian DeLuca and this is Maker Build It and today we are 3D printing and testing hand tools. We found some of the most popular hand tools on Thingiverse and we're going to put them to the test. And today we're testing the most common tools you would have in your tool belt. A hammer, a screwdriver, a wrench, and some pliers. We're actually printing them to see if we could use them in a real world setting. Now, why would you 3D print hand tools? There are several reasons. While we get these tools printed, let's talk about why you would 3D print your own tools. It's pretty cost effective to 3D print hand tools, especially specialized ones that can be expensive. Printing your own tool can save money, particularly tools for one time or infrequent use. Customization. You may need a customized tool that fits a specific dimension. Accessibility. Sometimes you just need a tool right there and then, and you can't really wait to go to the hardware store maybe the next day or drive an hour away if you're in a remote area. And rapid prototyping. If you wanna design your own tools, this is the way to do it. Now the success of a 3D printed tool depends on one really important thing, the selection of a material. So you'd ideally want to print your tools in a carbon fiber reinforced filament or a polycarbonate because they would actually withstand the most force and pressure. But most people don't have access to printers that they could print with those type of materials. So today we're using PETG, which is a lot better than using a PLA. It should hold up a little bit better. And let's see how these pet G tools perform. And we're gonna put them through some common household light tasks that you would do on an everyday basis that would simulate, for instance, installing molding or assembling maybe a shelving unit or a piece of furniture. Now, what are some tips for 3D printing tools? One, your infill. You wanna make sure, even though some of the recommendations on some of these STLs, say you could do them at 50% infill, I would recommend doing them at 100% infill, and that's how we printed all of these tools. You should also optimize your layer height and print at a 0 0.02 millimeter layer height. That will ensure better layer bonding. Now let's test these tools. Now we're ready to test our 3D printed tools. We may have to drill a few holes because we're gonna do some real world scenarios. So let's start with the wrenches. Now, to give you perspective, these are just four inch strips. And first we're gonna just try to get this through. Um, now, this <laughs> smart wrench broke. Two pieces broke off of it, and another piece just fell off it. So I think we're gonna scrap that. It's number one, tool down. So we're gonna try this wrench. Now, they're both sort of hard to open, and close. They don't really turn as quickly as you would expect. Okay. It turned it in a little bit, but what's happening is the it's slipping. So the even when I retighten it. There's too much pressure for this wrench to turn this into the wood. Now let's just try our regular wrench real quick and see. Yeah, and that easily turns it. It definitely started it. It got about two turns in. Maybe if I made the hole a little bit bigger, we'd be able to do it. But um, definitely first wrench failed completely. This one. What's happening is when I turn the bolt, the head is moving. Um, it's just not strong enough. The, the pet G is just not strong enough to turn this bolt. Now the screwdriver should work. 
because we're using the end of a screwdriver. Okay, let's just switch bits for a second. Let's just switch it to one bit. Obviously, it's a little too loose. So let's switch to... So as long as this stays in here, it should work. Because we're using a bit, this one is working. I mean, the handle's a little tiny compared to a regular screwdriver handle, and honestly, not that comfortable. Um, yeah, much more, much more comfortable on this one. But overall, it worked, but you're also using one of your metal bits. Let's try the screwdriver again, but this time we're going to use it with a wrench and we have a screw and basically a nut. So we're going to drive the screw through. We're going to drill a hole big enough where the screw could go through. Oh no. Now this one just broke. The wrenches are definitely not working. Um, the way we'd like to see them work. Okay. Okay. It looks like the wrench was able to uh, to hold the nut, although it did break. So I'm gonna say once again, wrench, wrench. So far, a no go. Screwdriver, pretty good. Now let's test out our little hammer. So how does the weight compare from a typical small ball peen hammer? This is uh, an eight ounce hammer compared to this 3D printed ball peen hammer. Let's weigh it. So this one we have one pound, 2.2 ounces. And our 3D printed hammer weighs only 4.8 ounces. So as you can see, these 3D printed tools are really light in comparison to your traditional metal tools. We're gonna start with a, we're gonna start with this really tiny nail. And we're just gonna move up progressively to the next size nails and see how far we get. You know like those toys little kids have where they bang the pegs in? That's what I feel like I'm doing here. It's a little awkward. Okay. Now this is our biggest nail. <laughs> okay and that was solid solid pet g as you can see it got about halfway through the big nail and broke all we have left is the needle nope pliers um yeah it actually has a cutter which is sort of funny let's see if we could pull this nail out of the wood. Okay. It worked. Let's try to turn a bolt with it. I wouldn't necessarily use a needle nose for this, but... Okay. I was able to turn the bolt. It, it doesn't feel like the most sturdy thing. Let's try pulling a bigger nail with the needle nose. Now, I am making sure with the needle nose, I'm pulling with this end up versus this end where I know it connected because I know it could easily come apart. It 
It definitely doesn't have gripping the way I would expect. I would say maybe if there was a screw and a bolt in here, it would work, but overall, I mean, it's holding up. It pulled the nail out. It was able to tighten this bolt down. That's what I was saying. If you don't have the right side up, it's gonna come apart. I think this concludes our testing. All in all, I would say trying to 3D print functional hand tools out of Petchy definitely did not work. We had a failure on the hammer. The needle nose sort of worked, except it fell apart because it was too loose. The screwdriver worked, but the reality is we were using a bit from our toolkit and the wrenches failed before we even used them, even though we got them to work in a couple of scenarios. So if I was on a desert island and I had a 3D printer, some filament and a solar panel to power it, I would say I would print everything I could out of the filament I would think was useful. And then I would pretty much break down the 3D printer and make some hand tools out of the metal from the 3D printer. Here's the thing though. I did print these out of PETG because that's what most people's printers could print, PLA, PETG. If I printed these in a carbon fiber reinforced filament, they probably would have handled differently. Or if I printed them in a polycarbonate, they probably would have worked much better. But in this scenario with the PETG, pretty much I would say this was mainly failure, even though we got a couple of things to sort of work. Some of the nails uh, until it failed. Uh, you know, we got the, the wrench to work to some degree with the screwdriver, but all in all, I would say 3D printing hand tools from PEG, probably not very useful. So I would say you're better off going to Lowe's or Home Depot and buying those hand tools that are on that bottom shelf that cost anywhere from three to six dollars. You'd get a lot more use and function out of those and they'd last you a lot longer than the one or two usage these uh, pieces got. But I guess in a pinch, if you really needed to hammer something in and it was 2 a.m. and you couldn't go buy a hammer, you could probably 3D print one in an hour. For more on 3D printing, DIY, or maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It. And remember, keep on making.